pull that up. And we'll, we're, we're going to do a Q&A at the end because I'm sure you're going to have questions on the topic we're talking about. But if you are watching live somewhere on social media, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, uh, wherever else we're streaming live, give us a hashtag live. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. Uh, today, we're talking about the anti-sales calendar method to enroll high ticket clients. This is something I'm really passionate about. Uh, before we started streaming live, I started telling all of the people on Zoom here today uh, what we're really doing. And by the way, if you're on Zoom, put your cameras on, play full out, drop your questions in the chat. We've got uh, Liz from Maine. What's up? Good to see you. We got Judy. Judy was one of my first community members way back about four years, not that, that long ago, but four years ago. What's up, Judy? We got Stephanie from Baltimore. We got Alexander from Virginia. Carolyn is hashtag live. Chris from Yucatan. Beautiful place. I was just there last spring. Matt in Wallingford. What's up, Matt? We got Matt here helping us out today. We got Jeremy in the house. Cameron, what's up, Cameron? Angelo, New Hampshire. Awesome. Keep it coming. Anyway, um, today I want to talk about the, the two places where it's it's acceptable, in my opinion, and everyone's got opinions, right? Some people will tell you, go do sales calls, build your setters team, go do cold DMs, book your sales calls solid. But today I want to talk about the method I have gone with and have reached over $2 million in revenue with this method without doing a ton of sales calls. And Again, I'm not going to throw too much rocks at you know building a sales team. I think it's everyone's got their own methods, and there are two different places where I think it's really important to do this. Number one is in the beginning. You know, as I started growing my community four years ago, I was jumping on calls about 15 to 30 minutes with my community members, not even to sell them. I just wanted to find out, you know, what are their goals? Why do they join my community? What's their obstacles or struggles? What are they trying to uh, achieve, and how can I help them? And from there, I started enrolling people and designing a program that could help them. And then from there, I'm like, okay, if I'm on phone calls all day long, I'm never going to grow a profitable business. So I started doing something called one-to-many selling, right? I host virtual events, virtual meetups, just like this, where I make an offer during that presentation. And sometimes these are one day, sometimes they're two, three days, sometimes they're five days. And I'll talk about my favorite model today. Now, once you become profitable, I highly believe in investing in yourself first and then investing into your company and your team. That way you could put those resources back into the growth of your business. And at that point, you could then hire someone to help you out with the sales side of things, right? Because again, if you are on sales calls all day long, you as a business owner aren't going to be able to grow your business at the rate that you'd like to. All right. So um, we're going to dive in. I'm excited to talk about this. And uh, again, we're going to do a Q&A session at the end. So make sure you guys drop your questions. If you're watching on social, there's a Zoom link in the description. If you're if we're live right now uh, and you're watching this and it says live in the top left corner, come jump on Zoom, come hang out with us. Uh, it's a little bit more intimate here in the Zoom room. But if, if you can't, for some reason, I'll be looking at the comments on social, uh, at least on the Facebook profile for now. All righty. Let me share my screen and dive into what I have prepared for all of you today. By the way, if you're watching this, we're live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern on different topics that I'm passionate about. Uh, Today, we're talking about the anti-sales calendar method to enroll high-ticket clients one-to-many through a multiple-day virtual event. Again, I know today is like a a one-day training, but I want to talk about why I love multiple-day virtual events, specifically uh, five-day workshops, or you might be, uh, you might have heard them called challenges or masterclasses, whatever you, you know, whatever terminology, it's all really, in my opinion, the same thing. But I love the idea of five days. I'll talk about why. I think there's some misconceptions when it comes to hosting multiple day virtual events. And I want to show you today that's actually a lot less work in the long run to create an enrollment process for your business using this model versus the old traditional ways. And, you know, people buy in different ways. I understand some people just want the information. They can make a decision in a 30 minute masterclass or an hour long masterclass. Some people that are brand new to your world that don't even know who you are, are going to want to go through an indoctrination process, get some momentum, get some results and learn to know, like, and trust you. And I believe there's no better way to do that to shorten the sales cycle than hosting a multiple day virtual event. And um, that's what we're going to talk about today. So in the chat, where are the comments if you're watching live on social? Who has seen ads like this, right? Who wants a full sales calendar every day looking like this? 
And it's funny because I think people think they want this, but in reality, do you really want a full, like, do you want to wake up and the first thing you have to do is go jump on a, a sales call? And then it's like no breaks for the rest of the next eight hours, just call after call after call. Like no one actually wants that. Am I right? Can you guys agree with that? What you really want is more clients, more qualified clients. And when you're doing this model, you're getting people on the phone that sometimes barely know you. Depends on how you know your, your brand awareness is and everything like that. But most of the time, they don't really know you or your offer. And it's a lot of hard pressure sales where you're going to get people into your program. And what this does is it results in high churn rates, meaning people dropping out of your program or asking for a refund or worse, charging back their, their payment. Uh, there's, there's a lot more problems I think that are caused from this method. Uh, and yes, you're going to get sales, but are they going to show up? Are they going to do the work? Are they going to give you testimonials? Are they going to send you referrals? Are they going to get the results in your program? And what I'm going to show you today has reduced our churn practically to zero. I, you know, knock on wood, we haven't got a charge back in over a year. Uh, refunds. We don't, we don't have to deal with these things anymore. Why? Because we have a filtration method and it's by bringing people through a five day uh, virtual event before they even get the chance to see the opportunity to work with us. And what this does is we're really conditioning our audience members and, and really filtering out the tire kickers and the time wasters. And we don't make an offer to people unless if we see them as a fit and they see us as a fit. Right. So we're most five day events. It's a pitch fest, right? In my event, the way we do it, you don't get to see the offer unless if you want to, right? We have a separate breakout room for that. And we don't let everyone into that breakout room. They even see the opportunity to work with us. And the reason I do that is because I think, you know, number one, if, if they're not doing the work in our five day event, they can't show up for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour a day. How are they going to show up in our coaching program? or your coaching program, if you're going to model this method, right? So we really get to filter out people, see how they show up. And that's why we've been able to, been able to reduce our churn and reduce our refunds and, and have virtually zero chargebacks. Uh, and we're getting better clients that do the work, get results, send us referrals, give us testimonials. All right. So I'm going to talk about today how this works and why I love this model so much and how it's actually a lot less work than most people perceive it to be. So for those of you who are new to my world, you don't know who I am at all. Uh, my name is Doug Bowton. I'm the founder of Full-Time Freedom. And four years ago, I was uh, waiting tables and bartending and working in the restaurant most weeks, seven days a week on doubles. And I was trying to pay off my six-figure student loan debt and literally working week to week. Like I, I, my paychecks every week were zero dollars because I worked for tips. And if you work in the service industry, you know, most employers will tax that out of your paycheck. So I was literally just working 100% commission on tips, right? I had no college degree and I decided that I wanted to change, right? There's a lot more to the story, but eventually uh, in uh, late 2018, I put in my notice. I started a Facebook group in January, 2019. Uh, within two months, I went on to earn the ClickFunnels Dream Car Award. I uh, paid off all my student loan debt within six months, within 18 months, went on to make my first million dollars in revenue, joined Russell's inner circle and started teaching this framework. And this is a picture of me on stage teaching this exact framework I'm going to show you today uh, to his inner circle members, which was a really awesome opportunity I got the chance to do. Okay, so now I just want to show you guys, for those of you guys who don't know me, like this has worked really well for me. And this isn't to brag at all, just hopefully inspiring you that like, you know, four years might seem like a long time, but it, think, change can happen very quickly when you decide to stop doing the same things that are driving you insane, like trying to fill your sales calendar and enroll people into your courses, your offers, your programs, your masterminds, whatever it is that you're selling. And uh, to date, we've done now 2.2 million in revenue with a total of 418 clients. We use these virtual events to sell products between a thousand up to $30,000. And uh, the structure we've done, we started doing this in a, a free model, right? Free five day events. We did 14 of those and we switched to a paid virtual event model. We've now done 16. We have our 17th one coming up soon. And I want to talk about the benefits of this model, as well as the benefits of going to a paid and gamified virtual event. We're going to talk about what that means today. 
So now before I started this process, just like most people, right? We're online. We're trying to figure this thing out. We have a product or an idea of a product and we want to go enroll customers. Well, this was the process I saw most of my peers doing online. So I followed suit, right? And that was um, a Facebook group to get them to watch a webinar, uh, to get them to book a call with me and enroll them into my course. So if we look here, I'll walk you through this visual real quick, right? Traffic from Facebook. One piece of advice that did really help me in the beginning was listening to my mentor. He said, one platform, one message, one offer. So I focused on Facebook. I produced content that would attract my ideal customer. They would come to you know, check out my profile. They would join my community. And then in my community, all of our marketing was designed to get them to watch our webinar, right? They would go to this page watch the webinar and then buy our course, or sometimes most of the times book a call with me so I could enroll them into our course over the phone. And this was burning me out because I spent most of my days on the phone trying to you know, sell that product. And the problems that this, it worked, obviously, I paid off my student loan debt with this, right? Within six months, $114,000 student loan debt, which is amazing. But at what cost? I was working more back then than I was in my restaurant job. And the problem that this caused was there was long sales cycles meaning like the average person that would find me online and to the point where they would join our community uh, for the most part was around three months, sometimes longer, sometimes a year, you know, over a year I found. Now it also had low conversions, like three to 5% is considered a good conversion rate for this type of model. I'm not satisfied with three out of every hundred people that find me and join my community and rolling into something I know is going to help them. I could, I want, I want to, increase that, right? Um, it was a ton of outreach, literally messaging people to join my community, people uh, messaging them to get them to my webinar, messaging them to get them to enroll into uh, my course. Uh, and we had a lot of low quality clients, right? So I had a lot of refunds, a lot of chargebacks, a lot of uh, people dropping out or not doing the work and then blaming me. And that made me feel pretty crappy as a coach, right? Especially someone starting out. Um, it really drained my energy. And I spent a lot of time on calls trying to enroll people that just weren't even, you know, qualified for this. Now, the number one mistake I see with models for enrollment, right, client acquisition or customer acquisition is it's people are overcomplicating it, right? Your sales process looks like something like this. And I want to show you today that it could be a lot more simple um, and, and just I'm going to try to convey this message the best way I possibly can. But most people say, Doug, like, I love what you're doing with your virtual event. You do one every single month. I don't know how you do it. That seems like so much work. But what I want to show you is like, imagine if I was still trying to do this, if I'm still trying to go out there and fill my sales calendar every day and, and a year goes by. So here's what the two options could look like. You continue to DM and get people on calls and try to grow your business that way. And then even maybe you're like, you know what? I'm not going to do the calls. I'm going to hire a sales team right away. The problem is most people don't have the resources to do that. So you're trying to find people um, and then you're trying to build the sales team and manage a sales team and you're paying out expensive commissions. And in reality, it's just, you don't have the expertise, the know-how or the funds and resources to do that. So now you're having people drop off your sales team. And it's just, I've gone down that route and it, and it was probably one of the hardest things I ever did. So I took control of my sales efforts and said, you know what, I'm going to start hosting event. I'm going to do it once. A, I started doing it once a quarter, right? Every three months. So I'm going to do an event every three months. And then I had to find a way to make it repeatable because the hardest part is just designing your event, which I could help you do in five days or less. We've helped thousands of people do this. You design it once and then you build the system to make it repeatable where like I have a, I have an event starting Monday. I haven't done anything to prepare for it. I've got processes and systems in place to fill that event. And I just show up and teach what I've done already 30 times now. So I actually love doing these events now. Um, and if we look at it, a year goes by and instead of me still taking all these calls or burning through sales teams, um, I can make a system to repeat an event once a month in those five days, we on average enroll uh, we've gone as between 15 to 25. So we'll call it average of 20 new high ticket clients every single month. And I do that in five days, right? 
And that's my goal to help all of you do the same. If you already have a sales team, great. What if you could double the amount of clients you're getting every month? Let your team continue to do what they're doing. But now you go and make your offer one to many. And what you're going to find is the people that are coming in through your event are going to be your best clients. I guarantee it. Because again, when someone shows up for five days with you and they go through the work and they're putting it in, they're getting the results, you're literally conditioning your perfect client in five days because you indoctrinate them. You get them to introduce themselves and participate, engage, give you a testimonial, send you referrals and get results. So imagine if you could condition your audience to do these things that we all want as coaches or, or you know, if you're selling a course, we want all of our clients and customers to be successful. Imagine if you could condition them before they even you know, join your course or program. And that's what this kind of event is doing for us. So we want to avoid this mess, right? Simple scales, fancy fails. So let's keep it simple. So when we talk about conversions, right? That's enrolling customers and clients into your offer. Uh, conversion is just a way to turn nurtured leads into sales. My goal is to condense that time frame, right? On average, I'd say 90 days is a typical, you know, everyone's going to be different, but I'd say for me, I found 90 days was our average sales cycle, meaning from cold to client. Um, if you look at a sales page, right? So these are some strategies people are using. They're like, I'm just going to throw up a website or a sales page. People could go read that long form copy or watch a video on there. And for every hundred people that hit that page, you're getting one new customer if you're lucky, depending on your price points, of course. Um, so that's, you know, sub 1%. Then you have conversations. Okay. Another way to get clients is I just go have a ton of conversations and out of every, you know, hundred people I talk to, maybe one's going to buy my offer. How much time are you spending on that? Video sales letter and webinars. These are between one and 5% conversions, which are considered really good in the industry. But if that's for every hundred people that watch your full presentation, only three to five of them are buying. Right when you know you could help all of them, but how do we get that number up? How do we increase conversions? And then you have sales calls, right? A good sales rep. This is a, my opinion, of course, but like ten percent is considered decent. I think twenty percent, maybe twenty to fifty percent, is really good. But let's just say, like you know, your you or your sales team is closing one out of ten people. Even if you're closing two to three. Um, it, it's, it could improve, but how much time, right? That's one-on-one -on -one. with events on average, we're enrolling, uh, clients at a 25% conversion rate from our paid events, 25%. I'm not talking about a thousand dollar product either. We're talking about a, a year long mastermind, a high ticket program, and we're getting 25% of the members that are, attend that event into our program. One to many without sales calls. So that's what I help people do. And I would love to help all of you at least explore this option for your business and really see that the effort you would do to build your own virtual event, to know that you can do this, you could design it in less than five days. I could help you with that. And then it's about building a system to repeat it, right? Who do you need to help you run this event every month where you just show up and present, make the opportunity invitation to the right people in that room. And that is your sales process. And then you go on to make multiple six figures or even seven figures. And now you can re reallocate those assets and you have the time to train a sales team or outsource that. I would probably recommend you bring it internal. Uh, I think everything should be done in-house um, for the most part. And now you can scale beyond that. But I think if it's just you or a small team, this model is definitely the fastest way with the most amount of stress uh, that you can go to get more clients. So if we just kind of go through some numbers here, if we look at the old way, and I just showed you guys some, but I want to give you a visual here. Let's talk about, um, I think the slowest way, right? Which is you have a traffic source, you have a conversation, they apply to your, your program, and then you jump on a sales call. Let's say if you have a thousand leads go through this, and again, these numbers are just, in my opinion, pretty average or, or standard. A thousand leads you get a hundred conversations out of those conversations. You're probably lucky if you have 30 applicants and then 10 of them are qualified to get on a sales call. If they all show up, you'll probably end up with maybe one client. If you have a $5,000 price point, you know, that's $5,000. Now, if we go to the next one and you want to kind of automate this process with a webinar, instead of having conversations, you could drive traffic to a video presentation, like a webinar, you have the application, you get them on sales calls. Now you have a thousand leads, 
maybe sh- uh, about half attend your webinar. That's about, I'd say standard half people show up, 500 people show up. Maybe you get 60 applications, you generate 20 sales calls and get four new clients. Now you're looking at $20,000 per time that you, maybe per month, we'll call it. All right. So it's getting a little bit better here. And then you have the new way, right? Think about a thousand leads, thousand leads. Our average event is around hundred people. We're not having massive events. About hundred paid uh, members join our, our workshop, our paid workshop. Um, on average, we're getting about 80 to 90 uh, of them to actually finish, which is pretty remarkable considering when I first started doing these events for free, we'd maybe have 10% of the people that attend actually finish the, the workshop. So we're getting uh, completion rates of over 80%. I want to show you guys how we do that today with gamification. From there, we're getting about half of them to apply, which results in 24. They When they apply to this type of event, we bring them to a private invite, a breakout room during that event. So only the people that are interested and approved and we'd love to work with get to see the opportunity. Now we have 24 clients and that's $120,000 with less leads, right? So this is a great way to filter out and save your time and your energy from doing things the old way. All right. If there's any questions on this, drop it in the chat. I'd love to hear a little bit about what questions you guys have so far. Uh, if you're a little lost, I'm going to break this down a little bit more for you and talk about um, how these events work. So I want you to know it's the number one thing I hear about people saying, Doug, like, I'm just going to continue to enroll clients the way I've been doing it. This is how I've been taught. I've been taught just to go and, you know, create a ton of content and talk to a ton of people, get them on the phone call and enroll them into my program. And I'm comfortable, I'm content. And honestly, building out a virtual event just seems like way too much work. I don't know if I could go live. I don't even know how this all works. So I think that's just them being scared of doing something new. So my goal is to convince people that it's actually much less work to do a virtual event than to stay stuck on the model you have. Because the model you have isn't scalable unless if you go and start replicating yourself and putting more salespeople in, which builds a bigger team, which will take more of your commissions, more payroll, more headaches, more turnover, all the problems. So like at the end of the year, would you rather scale that way? Or would you rather go run an event once a month that is done and built and you just show up and present and you should enjoy it? And if you don't, then there's certain things you're missing. And I'll talk about how to build that system so you do enjoy it. So a virtual event is actually much less work in the long run when you consider all things. And you can make your offer one to many without sales calls. Again, I've enrolled people into a $30,000 done for you offer at the end of this event without a sales call. A virtual event will filter out low quality clients. It creates a ton of user generated content and social proof. We get about half of our challenge or our workshop participants to give us some kind of video or written testimonial which is awesome for social proof. We've got thousands of those now. Uh, Virtual events are fun and people love them, especially when you make them exciting and different. Bulk enrollment in five days or less, one to many. And you build a simple to repeat, uh, it becomes simple to repeat when you have a system in place. So one of the biggest problems we create for our clients is that they have too many new customers. So what do we help them do? We help them build a fulfillment system. How can we do bulk enrollment and make sure everyone gets access and onboarded? And um, that's that's something we could show you how to do. We actually teach that in our workshop as well. And now, even if you don't have something high ticket, this works for affiliate offers. It works for monthly recurring subscriptions. It could work for done for you services consulting courses. It's really good for courses and programs, in my opinion. Right. And the cool thing about this is we actually sell three different offers, right? We have uh, our core offer, which is our full-time freedom Academy, which is a year long program, but some people don't want to do it with us. They want us to just do it for them. So that's our, our highest level. We don't get a ton of those, but people do say, you know what? I just want to pay someone to do this for us. Uh, And then on the lower end, we obviously talk about tools and resources in our workshop that help make our lives easier. And they sign up for those tools and we generate monthly recurring revenue through affiliate streams. So this could sell all kinds of things. I would focus on one core, but you could have other opportunities to to make this profitable. And um, once you switch to a paid virtual event, 
you know, now honestly, we're profitable on the front end, meaning people that buy our virtual event ticket, um, it's covering the cost for us to acquire that that customer. So everything that we do enroll them into on the back end, if they're a good fit, is is all profit for the business. So now when I started doing these events, uh, I started looking at the spikes, right? This is between February and March. It was about a year, two year process. I'm like, you know, what was I doing during these, these months where they spiked? And you could look here, guess what I didn't do between this time frame? I didn't do a virtual event. So you could see once I realized that I'm seeing these spikes, I'm like, how can we do more of these virtual events? Because the truth was right between here, it was about um, in two years, halfway to the two comma club award, right? I, I wanted the process of million dollars of revenue through my programs so I could get on stage uh, in September, 2021 to get that award, which I ended up doing, but I was halfway there in two years. And I only had like, I think it was, let's say seven months to go and do this. So here's what I did. I just started going out and uh, doubling down what was working, which was having these virtual events. And we did it every single month. We switched from doing it quarterly to doing it every month. And I was able to go and close the gap from, you know, $400,000 to over a million dollars in those seven months by doing this exact model, because we could go faster when you're enrolling one to many. And we asked, how can we do more? And the number one thing we saw was, well, the number one thing holding us back is fulfillment. We're getting too many, two clients too fast. And I want to make sure we're a fulfillment first company. That's one of our core values is we got to make sure our clients are, are being reached out to onboarded very quickly, getting access to our program, our calls, and they're getting results. So I created this system, which we give to our clients. And I show you this in our workshop, how you could actually um, make sure that everybody's uh, accounted for, and you can even track their progress and their activity levels. So we can make them more active. Let's get these, if they fall into less active or non-active, you know, how can we get them re-engaged? So now events are great. And I think there's some things that prevent people from doing events. Maybe who here has done an event, by the way, drop in the chat, who here has done a five-day challenge, a workshop, a masterclass, just drop it in the chat, right? Challenge, workshop, masterclass, webinar, um, live training, like drop it in the chat. What have you done in the past? I'd love to see some takeaways real quick. Mike, what's up, Mike? Mike says he's done all of them. All right. So as you know, we're, we're on, I want to see more. Has anybody else done any events here or all of you guys pretty, pretty new? We got to have a few more of you guys. We got, if you're live on Facebook, let me know too. Kyle, what's up? Kyle's done all of them. Love it. What's up, Kyle? Good to see you. We have a lot of you guys who have attended many. Cameron's done a three-day. Megan's done master classes, and she did a five-day challenge as well. Cool. So all of you who have done events, you realize that there's some problems. And as an entrepreneur, I'm a problem solver. So these are the problems I noticed after doing 14 of these free events, free five-day events that I wanted to go and solve. I probably should have done this sooner, but I just kind of stayed in my ways like most people do. And I said, it's time to improve this. So the problems I want to solve was I'm not sure how to structure my content, right? Who here is like, I don't know what to teach during my five days or my three day or my two day or my webinar. Um, a major one is low show up rates. You go out there and you build out this event and you are worried about people not showing up. And then you're worried about them not engaging and people just watching in the, you know, in the Facebook group or Zoom room and not actually engaging. Uh, lots of time and energy. You're dealing with a lot of tire kickers and freebie seekers, and no one actually ends up buying your offer at the end. Attendees aren't doing the work, so they're obviously not getting the results, the momentum that you want them to have. There's a lot of time on follow-up. You got to manage a sales team. You got to pay expensive commissions. All right. So these are all the things that I was noticing that I wanted to go out and solve with the way that we run our events. And just to validate these problems that I wasn't the only one having them, I put out a survey to my audience to find out what was their biggest worry about hosting a multiple day virtual event, like a workshop or a challenge or a masterclass. And these were some of their biggest concerns, right? 20, almost 20% said not selling enough tickets. Uh, almost 27% uh, said all the above, right? Low engagement, low conversions, not sure how to structure content. So... My, my feelings were validated 
that I'm not the only one out there dealing with these problems. So we changed our model. And when we started teaching this to other people, um, I, I didn't originally didn't have a program teaching our virtual event system. Um, but I was a part of masterminds that saw what I was doing. Like, Doug, you're having the biggest results in our mastermind. You know, you're crushing it. What are you doing? And I was asked from a few masterminds I was a part of to go teach this framework in their mastermind as a guest expert. And I started seeing people come out of the woodwork and you're, they're having now the best results in that mastermind too. And for quite a while, they're like, Doug, you got to do something with this. You have to go teach what you're doing with gamified virtual events. Like, what are you waiting for? And for me, I was just doing it to, to grow my business. And I wanted to make sure I had the experience before I started going teaching it. But when I started seeing the feedback where people were making six figure events from going through my framework, literally making six figures uh, in, in less than a week. Uh, sometimes, you know, most people, depending on your audience, five figures. Um, you could see some of the results. Some people making their first high ticket sale one to many. That's a great feeling. Like, wow, I enrolled someone into something that, is traditionally sold over the phone, but I did it one to many. And I started saying, okay, I got to go do something with this now. So when we think about it, how many people are out there teaching virtual events and five-day challenges specifically? Well, they're all teaching in their own unique way, but it still doesn't solve the problems. So I started thinking with my team, how can we increase this? How can we get people, 10% of the people are showing up, doing the work and finishing our event. So if we could get that to like 90 or even, I would love hundred, obviously, but it's not realistic. If I get this to 80 or 90%, imagine how many more people we could enroll into our programs and help them solve these problems for their own businesses. So we started thinking about what could help with that. And we learned how to gamify just through experimentation. And that increased us from a 10% completion rate of our events for every 100 people, only 10 people were finishing it. Now, 85 to 90 people out of those 100 are finishing our event and getting results. And because of that momentum, they enroll into our program at a rate of 25 to 30% conversion. So I caught some attention from uh, the, again, other uh, masterminds I was a part of, like Russell's Inner Circle. And I was able to get on stage to teach this framework and I only had 10 minutes to do it. So imagine what I'm teaching right now, but doing it in 10 minutes, I was like, you know, uh, uh, an auctioneer up there. Um, and then I was invited uh, at his mastermind in paradise to go speak on Pedro's challenge panel to talk about this experience as well. So it's been pretty amazing. And I, I love teaching this. I just want to go over a couple of mistakes right now. If you're thinking about doing a virtual event, what's going to prevent you from doing it again are these three mistakes. I'll see some people that do an event and I'm like, Hey, I saw your event. Why aren't you doing it again? Right. Didn't it work? They're like, yeah, but just the right people didn't show up. So I'm burnt out. I don't want to do that again. The wrong people are showing up. So hosting a free virtual event is usually attracting the wrong audience. So we started going with a paid model. So when I was doing free virtual events, we had a re again, we had low engagement, low show up rates, low completion rates, which ultimately led to low conversions. There's more people. We had thousand plus people in our free events. And there was so much time because I'm committed to every person in my event. I was literally reaching out to every person that was in that group. And most of them aren't responding. Most of them aren't showing up. It just killed my energy. Um, just dealing with the tire kickers and the freebie seekers. And then, then I'm not doing the work. And I'm, I'm over here trying to follow up with everybody. Like It was just not practical for who I am. Um, and I said, you know what? I want to change this. So we stopped doing free events. If you're considering doing an event, I would definitely recommend doing it free for the first one, especially if you have a smaller audience, just to get some momentum and have an audience to present to, get some testimonials from that event. And then I would say the second time, go and make it make it a paid event, even if it's like $5, just like get them to commit and, and um, you'll see a lot of those freebie seekers and, and time wasters drop off because of that. Mistake number two is not leveraging gamification for your virtual events. So when we started doing gamified virtual events, number one, we made them paid, right? We started charging between, you know, $27 to $97 for a ticket to our event. And we started really requiring people to show up and play full out, or they weren't going to be able to participate and win the grand prize or the other prizes. So we had high engagement because when they join our community for that event, we get them to go introduce themselves watch our welcome video, and 
they can't be a part of this event if they don't do those two things. Right. So from the get go, they're they're really showing up playing full out. And I'm talking about people that have six and seven figure, sometimes eight figure businesses that probably don't have time to be going through an hour a day for five days. But when the problem is big enough, people are going to show up and actually want to see what you're doing. So don't worry about people like a lot of people say, Doug, people aren't going to come to my five day event. People don't have time. No, they do. If the problem is big enough, they're going to come. They're going to want to see what you're doing. We had high completion rates, which led to more conversions to our program. Uh, it was way less time for me and way less energy draining. It actually brings me energy now to run these events. Action takers only. We had social shares through the roof. During the weeks that we do our events, we get people to share what we're doing. Um, almost every person in our event will share it to their social media. Uh, they do the work and we get about a little over half of the people to give video testimonials. And then the majority of the rest of those people give written testimonials. And there's little to no follow-up needed because of what we're doing. So the results of the first time I gamified our virtual event, uh, we had about $5,000 in ticket sales. You can see this is back in uh, about two year or about a year and two months ago, right? November 30th, 2021. My math's correct. Uh, a little over a year ago. Um, VIP ticket sales, 6,120. We had a front end offer that we sold 7,000 or a little 7,500, let's call it, um, for total front end sales, $18,000, right? And that's just in ticket sales and front end. We had 111 testimonials, 86 people applied to see the offer. We then put those 86 people, you know, the ones that were qualified into a, a room on Zoom. We showed them the offer and we were able to go on and bring in $95,000 and back in sales to our program. Total sales was our first six-figure event. That's over a year ago. Now we are consistently doing six-figure events with only 100 people. Our events, again, aren't massive events. So I want to show you how you can do this too. So people ask me about gamification a lot. Like, how does this work? We have, um, and your first one, you know, keep it simple. Just do a, a contest. For them to be a part of that contest, they have to just join the community, watch your, your video, uh, and maybe do one task to show that they're serious. For us, we have them introduce themselves in the community. It gets them engaged. Um, from there, we started thinking about this. We're like, wow, this gamification thing's working really good. How can we get everybody to do the work? So this was interesting. We started putting people on teams of five. So when people come through our event, now there's accountability. Now I don't have to reach out to people on you know day two or three of our event saying, hey, like, are you still, you know, going through the process, how, how's your action task coming along? We don't have to do that anymore because a team self-motivate. People are more likely to show up and do the work and complete the event because they don't want to let their other four teammates down. And it holds them accountable. So they love this. And they're all competing uh, for a grand prize and other prizes. And it makes this really collaborative environment. And it makes it really exciting to learn and implement. So attendees are more likely to show up and participate when they're signed to the teams. Right, which is really cool. And now um, how this works is people forget, and I think don't take this so seriously. They're so focused on filling their events um, that they forget to indoctrinate. I think one of the most important pieces is the indoctrination process. I'm going to show you guys exactly how we indoctrinate, which means like once someone joins our event, even if the event doesn't start for seven to 14 days out, how do we get them, you know, ready for the event and getting them to show up. We'll talk about the grand prize, structuring teams and captains, how the points work, tracking points, which is a big question for some, um, the application process, and then the front end offer. So before I do that, I want to talk about one of these components, which is indoctrination. Number one on here, right? Indoctrination process. So mistake number three, I find with people that aren't repeating their event because they had a poor result of it, they didn't follow the indoctrination process to the T. And what I mean by this is when someone registers for your event, we get them into a community, right? You should get them into a community and you should have some action tasks for them. Some of you guys are a part of our cold to client challenge coming up next week. Some of you guys joined it a, a few weeks ago. Immediately, we get you welcome to the group. We make sure that you're watching the welcome video and doing your pre-work. Right? These are only two to three minute videos, very simple to do, but people that complete this, we know that they're serious. 
they then get put on a team. We're not going to put people on a team or make them eligible for the contest if they're not doing these pre-work tasks, right? In some cases, we'll even refund and boot people out of our program or this our workshop. And it sounds rude, but we'll give them a couple shots to respond to us and answer, but I don't want lurkers in my events and you shouldn't either. So what does this look like? These four tasks, number one, we get them to watch the welcome video. Number two, I have them watch a, a two minute video about our prizes and how they could win and what it's all about. Number three, we have them mark themselves as going and adding these uh, events to their calendar each day. And then last, we have them introduce themselves. This is one of the hardest things for people, but I teach people how to go live and host a virtual event. So if you can't even just go introduce yourself in a private community, then you're probably not going to be a good fit for what we're helping people with. And I understand it could be very uncomfortable to go live for the first time and host this type of event. But I remember the first time someone said, Doug, you have to go live or you're getting the boot out of my, my group, which I loved at the time. Cause I, I, I went live, I broke out in hives. I was so nervous, but it sparked this thing in me to go live every day. I started my community because of that. I started doing these events because of that moment. So I just hope I could do that for some of you who are scared to go live or introduce yourself. I'll give you the exact prompt. You know, we get hundreds of people going, doing their first live stream in our community. And I literally tell them, just read off a piece of paper. If you're like, just write down your answers and read a script. I just want to see you do it. And because other people are doing that, they're more encouraged to go out there and do it themselves, right? Imperfect action, no judgment. And before we know it, they're going live every day in our event. They're giving us testimonials. They're becoming a natural in less than a week. They feel the confidence to go out there and put their own event on, run their own communities. So that's our indoctrination process and the why we have them do these things um, before the event even starts. Now, for the VIPs, uh, what we do is anyone who joins our VIP ticket, they get the chance um, to spend an extra hour a day on Zoom with us where we go a little bit more into hot seats and Q&A during that session. But these people also get the opportunity to become team captains, which is really fun. It's not a lot of work for them, but they get to lead a team and it takes, uh, it really empowers them to show up powerfully in our event and takes a lot of the stress off of me to have to worry about, you know, motivating people to do the action steps and show up each day. So it's really a win, win, win all the way around. And what we do is we send them a questionnaire uh, as they join VIP, we put them in a group chat. We give them a questionnaire. Uh, this is also how we deliver the daily uh, Zoom links and collaborate and network and deliver their bonuses that they get from being a VIP. Um, once we get them to fill out that form and we get the team captains assigned, we then place them on teams. Back then, we were doing teams of 10. Um, by mistake, later on, we ended up doing teams of five and found that teams of five worked way better than teams of 10. Um, so whatever works best for you. You don't have to do team starting out, but again, it's a little bit of setup work, but once you do this, it's going to make your events run much more smoothly, especially when you have a process that makes it simple and repeatable. Like we do now, we then uh, put them on teams. We have them choose a name. We give them points for doing the pre-work. So this is our pre-game leaderboard before we had team names, but their goal before the Monday of our event that starts is to name your team. Their first task is to name your team. That brings them all together. They get points for doing so. And we start off our challenge. And then every day we give them um, different uh, action steps to complete to continue to get points together as a team. Uh, and the, the, we put them in team group chats, which helps them collaborate and network, makes it a fun and friendly competition, holds them accountable, empowers the team captain, encourages the teammates. And again, they choose a team name and work together in that chat throughout the week. All right. The one of the last parts of this is the testimonials in the, in the community uh, on halfway through our event, we encourage them to upload and give us feedback and you could see here during this event, we had uh, 54, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about 59 people leave us testimonials and 42, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, about 47 or, or so uh, of our VIPs left us video testimonials. Now what we could do with this is leverage it the next time we run this event, it could become content where you maybe if you want to go a paid strategy, you could run ads with these testimonials to fill your next event. 
And then what we do now is we structure um, the event with daily action tasks. This is kind of what brings it all together. So even if you don't have teams, it's just individuals, they have to have a way to move forward and get momentum. So we actually give them a simple task every day. I present for about 45 minutes to an hour each day. And we wrap up that presentation and say, here's your action task. By the end of the week, my goal is to have them have a, um, a result, right? So what are these milestones I could give them each day, a simple, you know, five minute task, sometimes less that they could do to keep them in momentum. And by the end of the week, they have a really awesome result. And that's how they, co they comment on these posts. And you could see like day four, we had 213 comments. We go through and now I have someone on the team called our challenge assistant that takes care of all this for me. And that's what I help our clients do is take all this work off your plate. So you could just focus on running your event. Right. Now, the thing that's holding most people back from doing this type of event is they think it has to be perfect before they put it out there. You guys, my first five day event, I literally just went live in my Facebook group for an hour. There was no structure. There was no steps. There was no framework. There was no gamification or anything. I just went out and built out the content and just did it. And then I kept, I kept improving it every single time. It took me 14 times to get to, to the point where you see it as a paid gamified challenge. But now we help people do it within their first one or two. I've shortcut my client's path to success by building this for them and with them so they could just implement it and get the better results sooner. Didn't take them, you know, for me, a couple of years. Now they're doing it within a matter of a, a few uh, weeks or a month. Um, you'll say, I'll do this when, right? I'm just too busy focusing on my sales calls and all that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this eventually, but not right now. Some people just feel overwhelmed by all the things. I just showed you a lot, right? But you have to understand there's a few different types of events. You could do a free, a hybrid, or a paid. I want to help you decide which one's best for you and what level of gamification do you want to add? I don't recommend people that are by themselves to go do a full-blown team gamified challenge right away. But my goal is for you to have such a profitable first event or next event that you could easily and affordably hire a part-time challenge assistant that we give you all the SOPs for, we train them for you. That way they could take all this off your plate. You literally just show up. The last, I don't even know, I'd say dozen or so challenges that I've done, we do these every single month. The last six I could recall, I was away the weekend before. I was out uh, at our mastermind or retreats and I just show up that week ready to go because it's all done because my challenge assistant. And that's what we help our clients do too. Um, some people say, I don't feel worthy enough to do this. I don't think I have the skill sets to do this. And I promise you that you do. And when you come and see how I run these events and you come ask your questions, you can absolutely do this. Some people have way too many ideas or they have no idea of what kind of event to do. And that's why I created my workshop. So I want to help you. If you guys are still here and you're interested to come through my events, we have our, our next one starts Monday, February 27th. So if you're watching this before the 27th, there's a link above in the description to come through this event so I could break this down. I know we went over a lot in the hour, but we have sessions every day next week to break this down piece by piece for you. All right. And here's what I would like to do in this event for you is I'm going to help you create your signature virtual event one that's repeatable, that you could build a system around and repeat this, make it better every single time you run it. We're going to give you the assets to make it easier for you to run. We're going to help you build systems to make it repeatable. It's going to be an effective strategy to fill your events every time you do it. Get social proof and testimonials, increase your show up rates, increase your engagement and increase your conversions. You're going to be able to enroll clients one to many without sales calls and attract high quality clients who do the work. So during our event next week, my main goal is to show you not only like come watch me do this event so you understand how it works and take notes on what I'm doing. I also show you that too. But my ultimate goal for you is to come to this event. You're going to create your offer, refine your offer. If you already have an offer, you have to position it a little bit differently to sell it one to many, right? I'm going to show you how we do that. Then I'm going to help you come up with the topic of your event. We're going to help you choose the type of event you want to do. We're going to name your event. We're then going to structure your content, and then we're going to help you choose a date to launch it, right? And, and a few other things too, but those are really the key things. So if you would like to create your own signature event, or at least come see how this works, I'd love to invite you to our cold to client five-day challenge. It starts this coming Monday, February 27th. 
All right. And the important thing is we are actually just getting ready to gamify and get teams together today. So today will be the last day to join. If you want to be a part of the contest and the teams and see how this all works, and I highly suggest you do, because if you want to go and create an event like this for yourself, there's no better way to experience it than play full out and, and participate. So what we're going to do is during our, our workshop, we're going to give you this checklist. This is a checklist after doing this 30 times, we've created a setup checklist how to promote and fill your event, the daily checklist, what to do before, during, and after. So you could follow this exact process and don't miss a step. We're gonna go through this during our workshop and help you build this out. We're also gonna give you our six figure event masterclass. It's our six figure challenge toolkit. This is to get you ready. So if you come in today, what I would suggest this is only a two hour workshop or, or masterclass, go and watch this before Monday. Before we kick off, this is gonna give you your pre-work to help you get some of the things ready so you can implement as fast as possible starting Monday. So that's a bonus that we throw and it gives you actually the templates, our funnel template. Um, it gives you all our checklist, our workbook, our slides, all kinds of stuff that's gonna help you get the, some of you guys are gonna go all in. I know like Cameron's here, he's probably got his done. Cameron, some people like Cameron, you're gonna go in here and you're gonna be showing up Monday with everything ready to go and we're gonna refine it. You come into the sessions, ask questions and we're gonna make it even better for you. All right. So what you're going to do is go to, um, there's going to be a link in the chat, myfulltimefreedom.com forward slash C2C. It's floating around. There's also a link in the description on social media. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it's in the, uh, in the description below. All right. We only have three days left. You want to get into this now, click this button and, uh, and join our event. Here's what we're going to be covering. Day one, I want to talk about the number one mistake of client acquisition. On the first day, you're going to understand how uh, to really go from inconsistent, unqualified client enrollments to acquiring ideal clients in droves with less stress. Day number two, I'm going to show you how to shorten your sales cycle. And I want to show you why you might feel stagnant with your current acquisition strategy and what you could do about it. Day number three, we're going to show you how to position your, uh, your conversion event for maximum results. Right, I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer your offer. If you don't have an offer, we cover that in day two to really position it in a way that helps you reverse engineer it to structure your entire event. And now day three is the day where we really build out your topic, your name, your agendas. And then day four is once you have this idea for your signature event, I'm going to show you how to fill it. On day four, people are like, I'm ready to go. I believe in this model. I know I can do it. And I know that I have it all built out or mapped out. How the heck do I fill this thing? So on day four, we go through some organic strategies. We even go over some paid strategies, but we really focus on organic. Um, for especially if you're starting out, I recommend just the methods. We're going to show you how to fill your event up. And then day five is all about conversions. How do we actually take people in your event? At, and let's say you have it all designed. You have it filled. You you're ready to go. How do you deliver? And how do you enroll in a way that doesn't feel salesy? Right, we're going to show you that exact process on day five. All right. So that's what our five-day event is looking like. And um, the contest, it's going to be really fun. Like we love doing these things. We give away over $10,000 worth of prizes during next week that are all really geared to help you with your own virtual events. We're going to give you the checklist and a behind the scenes walkthrough. So if you're interested in this, you want to just like come spy on me and say like, Doug, how are you doing these events? Come not only take notes on what I'm teaching, but watch what I'm doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be transparent with you all next week and show you like what each day looks like and what I'm doing so you can take this and do it for your own five-day or multiple-day virtual events. Right? You can condense this into a, a, a two- or three-day if you want, but I'll show you why I love the five-day model. So what you're going to be getting to attend our cold to client workshop, it's five days live training with uh, myself. Uh, and by the way, it's about an hour a day right? So an hour a day starting next week. If you can't be on live, you do have access to the replays all week long. We want to encourage you to show up and implement as you go. You're going to get the million dollar challenge exercises, worksheets, templates, and tools that we're going to give you to help you design your own. You're going to plan and build your first or next conversion event. You can get answers to your questions every day. Uh, the prizes and giveaways and the contest is going to be a, a great time. I want you to see how this works so you can see how the gamification works. Uh, gamified challenge setup checklist and SOPs, our six-figure day framework masterclass, the challenge toolkit I showed you. 
Uh, we have a couple sessions, the conversion event system walkthrough, the sales CRM systems walkthrough, and how to automate your point tracking system. All right. Tickets are typically $297. Right now, it's $47 to attend this event. So $47 to attend. Immediately, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to choose. By the way, if you if you can't attend live and you just want to buy a 14-day pass to the replays, you can get that. It's $500 on the website if you go to myfulltimefreedom.com forward slash C2C. But why do that when you could attend it live? It's only $47 to access it live. You have the replays uh, from the each. Uh, these dates are, this, this slide's a little bit old. So it's really uh, February 27th to March 3rd. All right. So you have access to the replays until ne end of next week for $47. But we want you to attend live if you can show up every day and do the work and you're going to leave with the results. So go to the funnel here. We've actually removed the opt-in. We don't even want that anymore. Like just go and check out the offer. I just showed it to you. It's $47. Soon as you enroll, you're going to get an email. Uh, it's going to invite you to our challenge conversions community where we're hosting this event. So you're going to get approved and immediately uh, access this event today. Uh, our goal for you is once you're enrolled, go uh, watch the welcome video, go get the pre-work, make sure you're doing everything so we can get you placed into the contest. Uh, we're going to have our kickoff call Sunday, our pregame event. So we'll get you ready for the Monday. And then we're meeting for an hour every day, Monday through Friday next week. My goal is for you to leave with your first or next signature event completely created and ready to go. And there's no better way for you to implement this and to go and see how I run this event. All right. And by the way, as I mentioned, today's the last day to join to be eligible to take part in the teams and the contest for the prizes. We're picking teams today. We're announcing them uh, tomorrow. So I want to make sure that if you are interested in participating in this workshop, but also playing full out to be a part of the contest and get access to over $10,000 of the prizes that we're going to be giving away, today's the last day to join. All right. So um, I would love to ask any, uh, go into any questions you guys have as far as what was covered today. If you have any questions about your current client acquisition process and moving from that model to a more one-to-many approach, drop your number one question in the chat. If you have any questions about our workshop or uh, anything in general when it comes to client acquisition, I'm going to take the next, I know we're a little over, but uh, we'll, we'll take the next 10 minutes to answer any questions. All right, I see Cameron's already in. Yes, sir. I see you in the community. Anthony's in already. He says, this is really awesome. Thank you so much for a great thorough intro to see you on Sunday. Yeah. So by the way, if you're uh, attending, we're just going to stream live for about 15 minutes on Sunday. It's called the pregame. We announce your teams. We go a bit more in depth on what to expect throughout the workshop and make sure you're absolutely prepared for the start date of Monday. So just keep an eye on, you don't have to be on live on Sunday, uh, but we will tag you in that pregame. Just make sure you know who's, what team you're on. Um, so if you're, if you're committed and you're in before today, you will be on a team. Uh, you can opt out of that if you don't want to be, we, we totally get it. Um, so we do give you the option not to participate in the team, but we do want you to play full out and, you know, it, it makes it a lot more fun. And it actually, you know, what happens when people aren't on teams is they typically will find a way to not do the work. And that's not why we, we don't want your $47. I'm just going to be honest. Like we want you to commit to yourself and commit to your other peers in this event. So you get the work done. When we used to do this for free, people just weren't doing the work. So that's why we now put a, a price of $47 on our events. And we notice way more people actually completing it. Janet just joined. What's up, Janet? Good to see you here. All right. Any questions on client enrollment? I'm down to take a, like, if you're like, Doug, you know, I run a sales team. I think it's much better. Like, I'd love to have that discussion too. Everyone's going to have their own opinions, right? So what's your number one question when it comes to acquiring clients? Are you not ready to acquire clients yet? I will say this. If you don't have an offer, this event isn't for you. I don't want to confuse you anymore. If you don't have an offer, like I would say, sit this one out, go and focus on building an offer because there's no point of taking the, the time next week to come see how we run an event. If you don't have an offer to sell in your own event, it's just going to be a distraction for you. So I'm just going to let you know real transparently, like we don't want people in this event if you don't have an offer yet. Cool. 
We have other resources. DM me uh, no offer if you don't have an offer, by the way. We'll, we'll send you some resources. We have a, a program for, we'll give it to you for free that will help you craft an offer. Just DM me the word no offer. We'll get that over to you, okay? We'll help you really think about your options and what you can bring to the market to make an impact on the people that you can help. All right, see our first question. Um, Cameron, what is the biggest mistake you make on your first event? Um, man, it was so far ago. I think I just didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I would say when it comes to the offer, I was selling a course with coaching. We did one coaching call per week and I sold this program. I think the first offer was a 997 offer, but I did the deal for $800 and I had like a 12 pay option and it was lifetime access. So I think just structuring the offer it really almost, it was so hard to continue on after that. I put out this offer and what happens when you give someone lifetime access to something and a payment plan where they're only paying, you know, maybe $90, $97 a month to pay off. They're not going to take it seriously. They're not going to show up. They're not going to do the work. So I think it was just, I didn't know what I didn't know. And back then I just wanted to give as much value. And actually in reality, that was hurting people. So I think when it comes to having an offer, definitely want a time frame on it. And I now see the value of charging, not only the worth and the value that I'm putting into this, but anytime I've invested heavily in my business, I've shown up even more. And you know, who here has bought a thousand dollar thing and never even opened the course or never really finished the course, right? So it's it's not about charging more for your own wallet. It's really about charging your audience to get them to do the work. So I think starting out, a lot of people don't know their worth, don't know their value. They think they're helping their audience. And in fact, when they're giving them lifetime access to something, people are like, oh, I could do it later. I could do it later. When there's a definite stop, people are going to jump in and get it done. That's why I love the five-day container because we get so much done in five days. I've had people go through this event and they're like, I got more done in five days than I have in months or years in, in, the, in the past. So I, I love that. But there's a start date and a definite finish date. That's a great question. Um, also, Cameron, I would say structure. I had no idea how to structure my my event. And um, we did get customers. So I did something right. But I think it was just probably because I, I spent two months just giving a ton of value to that audience. And I think at that point, they're just like, when's this guy going to offer something that I could repay him for? And I think they just felt like, you know, the law of reciprocity. I think they were just like, I'm going to go, go through this thing. And that was my sales funnel mastery course about uh, three and a half years ago. We put out to the market. It obviously improved over time and we've evolved it. And um... Oliver says high ticket offer back then. Um, it was, it was just a course with weekly support calls. Uh, it wasn't, I, I don't consider it high ticket. Like what is high ticket, right? Everyone's got a different definition. Um, I think the market probably assumes that high ticket is anything over $5,000, right? Where people will say, you know, if it's over $5,000, you have to get on a phone call to sell it. That's not true. You guys, we've enrolled people into a five figure investment, um, a $30,000 to $50,000 done for you service. Of course, like when it's done for you, we do need to get on a call and talk about logistics and their unique situation. Uh, but they're sold without that call. They're ready on the call to pay and then talk about like, what's this process going to look like? So a lot of my coaches starting out, not a lot, but a few people are like, you know, you really got to build a sales team. You're not going to be able to sell a 5,000 or 10,000 or $15,000 product one to many. And not only am I doing that, but all of our clients are too. And now I'm helping them build this event out and making it repeatable. And I think the thing people struggle with most, the next step is fulfillment. How do we handle bulk enrollment, which I'm going to show you on uh, day four. I do a private session showing you how to set up systems to make it repeatable. And the next big thing people struggle with is uh, to make it repeatable is how do you hire uh, a challenge assistant to help you flip? I call it fill and flip. How do we how do we flip this event for the next time we do it? And how do we fill it again? And my goal is to have you hire a challenge assistant that takes that work off your plate so you could literally just focus on showing up and running this event. I think people just don't know how to hire, don't know how to train that person. We take that off your plate and help you do that. Not in this event. That's a little bit later on. That's what we help in our, in our coaching program. 
but yeah, the goal is to really increase your charger worth and hire someone to help you flip and fill your events. Cool. Anthony says, how far in advance do you start signing into the first event going live? Is week is four weeks realistic to maximize attendance on a rinse and repeat cycle? So we do every month. So um, your first one, I'll be honest, like you're going to be able to map out this event. I've seen a few people build out their whole event in five days, but realistically, if I can help you leave with a name, a topic, a name, your offer structured and your agendas planned out and some ideas to fill it. It takes, I've seen people do it in three days. I've seen people go in three days, build everything, build, you know, take our funnel template, um, set up the automation, set up the Facebook group and launch it. However, when it comes to filling it, I would say a 10, uh, average of 10 days, you know, seven to 14, one, one to two weeks to fill your event. Um, you don't want to leave a small window to get people to sign up. We start promoting like, so we're going to run this event on the 27th and it's going to end on the third. We take about a week off and then my team starts, um, we flip it during that week and we're going to start promoting the next one for, for the next month. So these happen every single month. We re rinse and repeat this process every single time. Um, if you've been a part of our cold to client challenge, by the way, we, we do update the curriculum and we take feedback. So we're constantly improving. So even if you've done this event, especially if it's been like back in last fall, you're going to want to come to this one again because of what we're doing. Uh, the market's constantly changing. Um, marketing in general is changing. The way we do our events, we're always enhancing. So you want to come back through and see it again. I promise you it's going to be different than the last time you saw it. And you should do the same thing with your events. But that's a great question. How long um, should it take? I'd say, yeah, Starting out, it might be really tough for some people to do it every single month. I started doing it quarterly and then I did it every other month. And then I got to the point where I could bring in a challenge assistant to help me do it every single month. Uh, there's really two things you're going to need to do it monthly. Um, if you're enrolling 20 new clients a month, number one is someone to handle fulfillment. So you're going to want to train somebody on the system we give you, which is your fulfillment system uh, to do bulk onboarding and make sure your clients are cared for. Because you're not going to be able to go enroll more clients if you know your current clients aren't being cared for, right? So that was my first big hire was uh, someone to help us with client success. And the second person I would recommend is, is, is part-time is a challenge assistant. That person's going to help you conduct your event, um, help facilitate, help um, if you're doing the points, track your points and all that. And then when it's over, that person's responsible for... Um, flipping the event, right? Changing the dates on the funnel and all that, and then filling the next one. So we show you how that person can operate. So with a three-person team, I know you could get to a seven-figure business. I don't think you need any more or less. I think doing it alone isn't realistic. You can, you're going to burn out. Um, but with a simple three-person team, you can absolutely get to that point. And then if you're like, you know, now that's where I am, now I'm, I'm building a team. We've got a team of 10. And yes, I do have, a, a, we're building out a sales team currently because I believe, like, like I mentioned at the beginning of this training, it's great to start with doing calls to figure out who you're serving and their problems and their desires and craft something that's going to help them. Um, and then once you have that solid, go do an event, sell it one to many, do it every single month till you hit a million. After that, now you have some resource to allocate back into your business Yes, I think it's it's wise to go build a sales team where if we have 100 people in an event every month and only 25 of them are, are enrolling into our program, we have 75 people that we know we could help that we're not, we're not reaching, they're not ready or whatever it might be. It'd be foolish of us not to go and bring somebody in to follow up with them, find out what they need help with, and um, over time, find out if it's a good fit for them, right? So now I know we'll probably on average this year bring in... 20 to 25 clients a month through our event. And I'm thinking probably about another 15 to 20 with that role. So now we are going to be bringing that in. However, I want you to, if you're not at a million dollars per year yet, to focus on this model. It's going to really help you save time and energy and enroll more clients one to many. Vito, what's up, Vito? Vito says, can or will we work on building out a value ladder? Vito, um, this is how could I say this? Uh, this is probably controversial. 
I don't believe in the value ladder. Here's what I believe in at, at the, if you're starting out, if you don't have any offers, like one offer, focus on one offer. That's going to change the lives of the people you serve, whether it's in health, wellness, or relationships, go create an offer, launch it and prove it for a year. Go get that offer so solid that you could start getting amazing results for people and then charging more for it. Cause you're going to get more in demand, right? If you have a thousand dollar offer and you're starting to roll uh, when I had a thousand dollar offer with this model, we were bringing in about 75 to 80 clients a month. It was just too much for me because I'm so hands out my clients. That's when we started, we became more in demand. We started increasing our price to 3000 and 5,000 and beyond. And I want you to do the same thing. Focus on enhancing that product. Only one product, no freebie, no um, continuity, no core course, like literally go create a product, an offer that you can roll. Focus on that one thing. Um, depending on your niche, I would say get to between, you know, $3,000 to $5,000. That's a, a, a the sweet spot for these types of events to enroll one to many and repeat that until you hit a million. At that point, now you can focus on the value ladder, right? Now you can focus on building a front end, you know, uh, or an MRR. Like you guys, I don't have anything besides our, our full-time freedom Academy program. We have one event and one core offer. That's our full-time freedom Academy. You know, now we are focusing on here's the, the, the way I look at a value ladder. Um, now that this is solid and we're loving this experience, we're going to, uh, we've added a, a higher end Ascension model, which is a done for you. So most people will say, I got my core working. Now I'm going to go at a low ticket. Why would you do that? Go set, people are, you're getting results for them. They're going to want to ascend or they're going to go to somebody else. So focus on the core offer and then build an ascension of what problems are you creating? The problems we're creating is too many clients. They don't have systems to repeat this. So now we're like, Hey, we have a done for you where we will help you implement this higher challenge assistant, hire someone in fulfillment, build out these systems. So you can make this event repeatable and go faster. Right. And now once we have, uh, we've We've pretty much got solid. We have a few more things to work out where we could take on more done for you clients. Then at that point, I'd say six months from now, we're going to go add a front end low ticket, right? Uh, a break even funnel, you might call it, um, or SLO. But the beautiful thing about this event is the five day challenge model is all these things in one. Literally, uh, an event is a it's a freebie. We get them to opt in. It is a low ticket, right? Uh, Forty seven dollar ticket it has an OTO for VIP. And then it has an ascension into our program. So your event becomes all these funnels. Like your event is your value ladder, but you're only selling one core thing. And I think where people go wrong is they're trying to sell a low ticket. They're trying to sell continuity or monthly recurring subscription, or they're trying to sell five different things. And I fell into this trap of a value ladder and I call it a value maze rather because I was lost. And if I'm lost in my own offers, what do you think your audience is going to be? They're going to be confused as heck. Now that we only have one offer, it's our full-time freedom Academy. Um, you all know that now, right? People know that they're not going to be questioning. Have I done this thing? Have I done this? What's your value ladder look like? People get so confused in what your offers are. They're not going to move forward in any of it. So that's my kind of my two cents on that. Sorry for the rant. It's just, it's a great question. It's a really good question. People ask. Um, Anthony says, what's the max number you've had in an event so far? When we were doing free challenges, we were, we had a, an event um, between, I think it was over 1400 people, 1,400 people. And that's when we were getting like 10% to show up live. And I'm like, this is going to kill me. Like when I go in, I go all in on something. And for the, the energy I put into that event, only 10% were showing up, which is actually pretty good standards for the industry, whatever they consider good. It wasn't good for me. Um, so we started doing paid models. I think our biggest paid event, um, I don't know if you know, Jerry, I would say 250, 250 paid people in our event. Yeah, I think 225, 250. Yeah, something around there. Right now we've dialed back. Um, it's We don't go out there and try to like, hard push our events. Like if you see it and you want to come join us, we're thinking like a hundred, 150 people is where we, where we want to be. Um, I would love to grow that more, but because I give so much attention to everyone in my workshop, I don't really want to be more than that. If anything, uh, I'll probably increase the price uh, for general and increase the price for VIP to keep it around 120, 125, 150 max. Yeah. But it's up to you. Like, where do you feel comfortable facilitating? Some people just want thousands of people in their event, but what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to, 
the, the purpose of the event kind of goes away at that point because the purpose is to find the best clients. How do you sift through a thousand people? Well, naturally, the five days is going to do it for you. People that don't make it to day four or day five to even see the offer, they self eliminated, which is good because they just they opt out because if they're going to opt out in five days, imagine when they join your program or your course, you think they're going to go get the result. No, I don't want people in my program. If they're, if they're lurkers or we call them half assers, or, you know, we want, we want the action takers and the action takers show up. They do the work in the five days and they're ready to move forward. We don't, we don't, we, I say we show an offer, but we don't pitch. We don't hard sell. We make an invitation for the right people. They say I'm in and we limit those spots every month. So Cool. Great to have a waiting list because you're full. Yeah, have a waiting list. Um, we're going to hit capacity in our program this year. I can't wait for that. And um, we have over 100 clients now. We're, we're going to be capping out our full-time Freedom Academy at 200. That's where we feel comfortable with the coaches that we do have. Yes, we could scale that, but I'd rather have a cap on our, our program. And then as people send or people that aren't doing the work or, you know, whatever reasons come up or they, they can't continue, they're going to get removed. And only then will we let people on the waiting list jump in. So I'll still do these events because it's what I teach and I'll find a way to, you know, um, I'll probably just do them without an offer and that's okay too, but it's building uh, goodwill in the market. And I can probably find some things to do when we do hit that. We'll probably hit 200, I'd say by midsummer if we continue the pace we're going every month. But yeah, I think having a max... Most people don't do that. Most people say, we want more and more and more. And then what happens is their fulfillment suffers. And then their clients don't get the results and they build a bad name for themselves in the market where I'd rather um, stay in demand and make sure that we have contact with every person that joins our programs and make sure that they're all getting results. I'm unrealistic. I want 100% of my clients having a five-figure event on their first one. And I know that's not always the case, but that's what we're dedicated to. And what happens is some people that um, have a, a solid offer and a, an audience they've built up. We've, we've seen people do six figure days with this type of model, which is really awesome. My goal is that who's going to be my first one to do a seven figure event. That's, that's the next goal, right? Awesome. Everybody. Um, I think we are over time, but um, if you have any more questions and you're watching the replay, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, our groups, drop your question in the chat. I always spend uh, an hour on Thursdays later in the evening after my work day to go back and look at questions. We'll answer your questions. Um, but I'd love to see you in the cold, the client workshop. If you are ready, you have an idea for an offer an offer already selling. This is going to be uh, an experience that you're going to want to attend to learn what we're doing so you can implement it for yourself. And you will do that in five days or less starting on Monday. All right. So join today. We'll get you into our private community. Uh, link is above. And I cannot wait to work with all of you in that. And um, otherwise, I will see you next Thursday. For those of you uh, who aren't attending, we'll still have our, our free training next week. Um, I got to figure out what time it's going to be because our, our, our five-day workshop is during this hour, but I'll probably have something later in the day for, for our free trainings every week. All right, everybody. I will see you all in the cold to client challenge. For those of you who are enrolling, um, we'll see you hopefully today. All right. So peace and love, everybody. We'll see you in our event. Take care. Thanks for showing up. Thanks, Anthony, Alexander, Theo. Appreciate you. Megan, Carolyn, Vito, Anna, Judy, Patty. Thank you all for being here today. Take care, everyone.